In the shop again is this 2014 GMC Terrain. The issue tonight is that the windshield wipers are no longer functioning. Driver was driving down the road, heavy rain, heavy foggy conditions, and just all of a sudden the wipers stopped functioning. The driver did describe that it did sound like the wiper motor was still functioning, however the wipers were not moving whatsoever. So in my opinion, from the driver's diagnosis, it, it, it sounds like we have some type of linkage issue. And I can also kind of confirm that by grabbing the wipers, and I can actually move these freely currently. Uh, now, if these were properly connected to the motor, I would imagine we'd have the resistance of that motor. So first thing I'm going to do, turn the key to the on position, not start the car. And I just want to listen and hear if that windshield motor is uh, indeed functioning. But anyway, this video will help you replace your windshield wiper motor if you have a faulty motor or in my case if you have a type, uh, some type of linkage issue this video should prove to be very helpful in fixing that issue uh, not sure what we're going to find hopefully we can repair it without replacing any components but we're going to have to take things apart to really find out what's going on so let's get started It does sound like the motor is functioning properly. Again, it sounds like we have some type of linkage issue. So first thing we're going to need to do is pop the hood and remove some clips. So I believe the wiper linkages and motor sit underneath this plastic cowling in front of the driver's windshield section. So in order to access that, we're going to have to do a few things. We're going to have to peel back this rubber gasket a little bit. We're going to have to pop off these push pins and then we're going to have to remove the wipers themselves. So first thing, let's work on this rubber seal. So starting on the passenger side of the car, we're going to take this rubber weather stripping and we're just going to pull it outwards and pop it up. See there's a little hole? Well there's a little hook right there so you just need to pull this forward and pop it off the hook. And repeat the same step on the driver's side. Now while we're on the driver's side, just beneath that rubber seal, you're going to notice that there's one of four push pins that we need to remove. Easiest way to remove these is with a body clip removal tool. Simply insert it in between the two plastic pieces and you're trying to pop up the top section of the clip. You may damage it a little bit, big deal. Just pop up the top section of that clip, make another purchase underneath the clip, simply pop out. And again, there's four of these clips, so we just removed the first clip. The second one is in front of the passenger side windshield wiper. Uh, another one here, and then another one here. You can't miss them. Next, we need to remove the wiper arms themselves. So in order to remove the wiper arms, there is a plastic clip that you should be able to pry off by hand. We'll put that off to the side. Then you're going to see that there's a nut there. This is a 15 millimeter nut, so we're going to try and remove this with the impact. There's that nut. Then let's see if we could just pry these arms right off. It's a little tight in there. Let me try my body clip removal tool for leverage. Of course, I don't want to break anything here. Hmm, interesting. Huh, it's interesting. Just kind of popped right off there. All right, let's see if we could just wiggle this other wiper arm off. I think it helps actually if you uh, you articulate the upper part of the wiper arm up. Maybe a little tap with a hammer. There we go. Yeah, tapping on that bolt with a hammer definitely seems to help loosen it up. So something else I want to go over real quick this plastic shroud makes a connection to this trim that goes up around the lower corner, well, goes around the lower corners of the windshield. The way this connects to the plastic panel, there's just basically a, a pin and slot connection. So the piece that goes around the corner of the windshield, just take two fingers and kind of lift up on this. You see how that kind of popped up? I know you're 
really not going to be able to see it too well, but there's two little tabs right there that go into that little slot. So we'll do the same thing on the other side, off camera, and then I'll pull this out of here carefully. We just do need to be careful because there are windshield washer fluid connections right there. And uh, we should be able to disconnect that. Let me show you how to do that next. All right, we're back on the driver's side of the engine. So in order to disconnect the windshield washer fluid supply line, you're gonna have to peel back this driver's side plastic panel. And now underneath this plastic panel, you'll see in a moment here that there's two clips, which I've already popped up. So if I fold this panel back, you can see there's one clip right there, metal clip here, one metal clip right here that go into these two slots. With that folded over, you now have clear access to this windshield washer uh, supply line disconnect. This is right above the driver's side strut connection. In order to disconnect this, really simple, you're gonna look for the two bulges and you're just gonna pinch these together which will make the opening round, therefore allowing you to pull out this connection. Simple, there's an O-ring in there. You could also uh, inspect that and replace it if you need to, but now we should be able to remove this shroud completely out of here. Let's give this a try. I think we have all our clips disconnected. Oh, and it just pulls right out. So I was able to sneak my hand back here and I have confirmed that we do have a linkage issue. In order to try and correct that, I'm gonna to have to pull this whole assembly off of here. Now I'm gonna start by removing the windshield wiper motor electrical connection. So I'm gonna take a finger, sneak it around the back of this motor right here. You could do this with the motor out, by the way, but there's a little tab you just gotta pull up with a finger and simply slide this electrical connection out. See, that's that little tab that I was reaching behind to uh, pop that up. Now we have three 10 millimeter bolts that we need to remove. One, two, three. And now let's pull this assembly out of here and see what's going on. Yep, there's your problem. Linkage failure. So it's the next day. Here's the old linkage and motor assembly. I was hoping to be able to reconnect the linkage back together right here. This is where it's separated. But this is a ball and socket joint. And I couldn't come up with a solution to allow me to connect this back together that would allow it to last a long while. Yes, I could have drilled and tapped that maybe, but who knows how long that would have lasted. So I did the next best thing. I purchased a new linkage assembly on Amazon. Uh, got here in about a day. Cost for this part, just the linkage, was about $40. So can't beat that. Uh, if you wanted to purchase an assembly with a new motor on it, it probably would be around double the cost. I think, you know, 70 to $80 roughly. I will leave links in the description down below for a new linkage assembly as well as a linkage assembly with the motor if you want to go that route. Uh, but anyway, my motor's still good. So my plan is to dismount this from the old linkage and then remount it on the new linkage. So let's do that now. So now we need to remove the old motor from the old linkage assembly. We're gonna do that by removing these two 10 millimeter fasteners. Now there are no nuts. These fasteners are threaded into the bottom bracket. Great. Just put this bracket off to the side. The next thing we need to do is remove this linkage that is bolted onto the motor output shaft. In order to remove that, we're gonna need a 14 millimeter socket. So there is a nut and spring washer. So we'll put that off to the side. Now, this is really important. Note the orientation of this linkage. We know this motor is good, and when I shut off the car, the motor retracted back to its original position. So this linkage is currently parallel with the motor. When we go to connect the new linkage in a moment here, it's very important that we keep this in the same line. So the new linkage, again, should be parallel with the motor. And uh, I have had this off once already. This is my second take on this shot, but in order to pry this off, you may need to get a pry bar under here and just pop this off, but it should come off pretty effortlessly. So let's go ahead and grab our new linkage assembly again. This connecting rod, I want this to be parallel to the motor. So I'm just gonna line it up, try and make sure it's nice and parallel. 
put my lock washer and nut back on and we'll crank this down. And you're gonna have to crank that nut down pretty tight. Now let's mount the motor to the new linkage assembly. So there are two pre-drilled bolt holes. We're just gonna line up the bottom of the bracket with those bolt holes, or with those uh, through holes rather. Take our bolts, line it up, start these bolts by hand. Switch back over to our 10 mil. Now we have our new linkage assembly attached to our old motor. Now we can reinstall this back in the car, bolt this back down, reconnect the motor. All right, now let's reinstall this motor and linkage assembly. Just line everything back up. Make our connection to the motor. And then there are three bolts, if I'm not mistaken. I think these are 10 mil. So we'll get these started by hand, crank them down. And then we'll test this assembly and see if everything sounds like it's functioning properly. And hopefully start the reassembly process. Alright, I'm going to go in the car now. I'm not going to start the motor, I'm just going to turn the key to the on position. Alright, I'm going to turn the wipers on. Let's see how everything functions. Seems to be working okay. Time to reinstall this plastic cowling. So I'm going to start by getting this roughly positioned in here, tucking the corners up under the hood there. Next thing I'm going to do is reconnect our washer fluid line. That just pops right back together. And you remember the connection to the corner trim pieces at the lower corners of the windshield. I'm going to start by uh, Snapping those back together, and it's just basically pin and slot. You see the little slot? Just line it up, pop it back in. May not look like it's back together, but you'll know once it pops back in. So that's popped back in. Now on either corner of the car, you're going to have these plastic panels. I didn't pop this one up, but I'm going to pop it up now because I need to make sure the cowling is underneath it. But just get this up out of the way, fold it over. You see there's two metal clips here, making sure that our corner trim piece didn't pop back up, which it did a little bit, you know, whatever. Uh, so now we're going to pop this back in. There should be a few clips in here, but mainly it's those push pin rivet things that uh, hold this together. So what I can do now, I can fold these plastic panels back over. Now these have the two metal clips, so you gotta make sure they line up in the rail. Fold back that uh, rubber weather strip a little bit there. Pop it back in. That's popped back in. And you remember earlier, we stretched the uh, this rubber seal a little bit to remove it from this little hook. So I'm gonna stretch it back, reposition it on the hook. Do the same thing on the other side. Pretty basic, guys. Work this down, get those two metal clips in there, pop that in, stretch the rubber over that little hook, and that is good. Now we need to reinstall those four little pop pins. Three, four. All right, now it's time to reinstall the wipers. I'm gonna show you my technique. So I'm gonna lower the hood down to the point where it makes its first latch. I'm not gonna push this down all the way. Now I'm gonna grab the driver's side wiper, of course, and the passenger side wiper. You know what, maybe we should start with the passenger side wiper. I think that makes more sense. Uh, passenger side wiper should be a little bit shorter. 
So we're gonna be looking for that threaded rod and we're just gonna line this up where we think it should be positioned. Honestly, I probably should have noted this earlier, but whatever. So I'm gonna say right about there. The passenger side wiper is just a little bit above the clear glass right there. And I think that's a pretty good position. So I'm gonna push this down a little bit firmly onto that threaded rod. I can see it sunk down a little bit. I may need to adjust this a little bit, but you know, take your time here. Try and get it where it needs to be. Try not to crack the windshield. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Now I'm gonna take the driver's side wiper and just position it as to where I think it should be. Keep the wiper completely on the black part of the glass. So we'll try and get it in a good position and put a little bit of pressure down. It actually helps if you fold the wiper over it. It seems like that relieves some of the tension on that uh, nut down there. But I'm pretty happy with the position of the wipers right now. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lift the hood back up. All right, let's install these two nuts and we're gonna have to crank these down a little bit tight. So I'd recommend just holding the wiper in position with one hand and then get yourself an impact or a socket wrench and do that with the other hand. Nice and tight. You can see the other wiper shifted slightly. Not a big deal. Reposition it as to where I want it. Again, it's all on the black glass right there. Crank this down. Make sure it's tight. That looks pretty good. And the final thing we need to do is reinstall these plastic trim caps. And again, these should just snap right in. One, two. Now, let's give it a test. All right, giving the wipers the first test here. Uh, the passenger side wiper looks fine, but I'm looking at the driver's side wiper and it comes to within maybe a half inch of the A pillar here. So I think off camera, I'm gonna unbolt the driver's side wiper and just reposition that further down the black part of the glass. Uh, but aside from that, this is a good repair. I'll leave links to everything I used in the video description down below. And that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. And just to show you, I did reposition that wiper. Now it's a good maybe two inches away from the edge of that A pillar. So I'm very happy with these results. Saved a little bit of money by just replacing the linkage and not the motor. Good repair.